So, these are the levels of respiratory support and here the HFNC is just above the low flow oxygen devices. So, it comes here which means like it is somewhat better than a low flow oxygen, but it is inferior to CPAP, inferior to BiPAP. So, it does not mean like it is inferior, but it is definitely better than a low flow oxygen device and let us see why. So, what is a low flow device? What is a high flow device? So, the nasal cannula that you routinely use to deliver oxygen, transtracheal catheters, simple face mask oxygen, partial rebreather mask and even non rebreather mask, they are low flow systems. What is a high flow system? A venturi mask, the nasal high flow oxygen which you are going to discuss right now, resuscitation bags, the flow, uh, uh, you know, the J JR circuits, the flow related uh, uh, positive pressure devices, no? the Jackson Reese circuit, the Bain circuit. So, these are the resuscitation bags, they are high flow devices hyperbaric oxygen chambers and air entrainment nebulizers. So, why these are called as high flow, why the others are called as low flow. So, what is the difference between low flow and high flow? So, basically it is dependent upon three things, the performance, the FIO to delivery and the ventilation requirement. So, in a low flow, the performance is variable, meaning the flow rates are very changing, it is not a fixed flow. Sometimes it depends on the patient flow. If the patient flow is high, your uh, flow uh, in relation to the patient flow will be less. For example, you keep a, a nasal prongs oxygen at 2 liters per minute. If a patient is breathing at a rate of uh, 5 liters per minute, it is, uh, it is contributing up to 20 to 30 percent of the patient's flow. But if the patient's flow increases, the contribution goes down. So, this is called as a variable flow. So, this is a variable flow, whereas in the high flow, the flow is fixed. So, how much ever the patient can breathe, the patient's flow and the high flow, it, it, either it would be more than this or it would be equivalent to the patient's flow. Next is the FIO2 delivery. Since there is a change in flow variation, the FIO2 also will be variable. I will tell you why in the next few slides. But here, the FIO2 delivery will be consistent. And the ventilation requirements, as I said, it delivers only partial ventilation requirement, only partial of the flow rate which is required by the patient. Therefore, here the delivery is partial, whereas here it completely delivers equivalent to or more than the flow demand of the patient. Therefore, it delivers an entire demand for the patient. So, here the gas flow exceeds the peak inspiratory flow in high flow devices, whereas here it does not increase the peak inspiratory flow. And therefore, the difference between high flow and low flow depends upon what is the minute ventilation of the patient, what is the oxygen flow rate of the device and what is the dead space of the device. So, if any device which delivers the complete inspiratory demand of the patient or more than the inspiratory demand of the patient with the reduced dead space and it matches the minute ventilation or twice the minute ventilation of the patient, then the device is called as a high flow device. So, based on this, this device is planned which is the high flow nasal cannula oxygen therapy. It provides the O2 at flow rates more than the patient inspiratory demand that is why it is called as high flow. Here the flow range is given from 2 to 20 liters which means the machine can deliver like this is a machine. It is called as an arrow. There are many arrows 1, 2 and now arrow 3 has also come and this machine delivers the flow up to 60 liters per minute and it can deliver high flow also and also a high oxygen also. You can deliver an FIO2 using this up to 90 to 100 percent. So, it is a mixture of air and oxygen and the most important thing is it is heated and humidified. Humidification with 100 percent related to humidity at 37 degrees Celsius and the standard oxygen therapy delivered through a nasal cannula and other device such as non-rebreather mask, it is cold, it is not warmed and it is dry and it is not humidified. The water present in that oxygen flow meter is not humidification. Nowadays, we have stopped using that, uh, 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 we, are, we have stopped adding water to the flow meter devices because it will lead to increased contamination. Therefore, we have stopped doing that. So, this adding water is not humidification in a normal oxygen or nasal prongs oxygen. So, whatever we are delivering using a normal nasal prongs or a face mask or a uh, non rebreathing mask, it is a dry air, it is a cold air and it is not humidified air. 
and that is why this heated high flow nasal cannula is called as a non-invasive respiratory support. When not to use, this is very very important. Even for your exams you need to remember this because when HFNC is contraindicated, any respiratory failure or impending respiratory failure, when there is bradypnea, when there is bradycardia or when there is a fall in GCS, you should not attempt HFNC. Inability to protect an airway, as I said before, the loss of gag reflex, lots of pooling of secretions in the airway and child's GCS is low and is not able to protect the airway, HFNC is definitely contraindicated and it should not be used. Severe hemodynamic instability, any child who is hypotensive and is not responding to one or two boluses, a child is requiring more than one vasopressors, so these children HFNC should not be used. Uncontrolled vomiting and copious upper GI bleed, definite contraindication. Total upper airway obstruction you should not use. And in trauma, surgery to the nose or nasopharynx, obviously HFNC should not be used. So low GCS, impending respiratory failure, severe hemodynamic instability, orofacial trauma or orofacial surgeries, bleeding, either bleed in the nasal cavity or bleed in the uh, GI cavity you should not use and an upper airway obstruction due to a fixed mass like tumor HFNC should not be used. So what it does to the lung parenchyma? So in the lung parenchyma as I said it is NIV, CPAP, NIV, BiPAP and other modes which will deliver the alveolar pressure. So here in inspiration and expiration especially in expiration when you add PEEP the collapsed alveoli will open up. Once the collapsed alveoli is opened up, the ventilation perfusion, it decreases the VQ mismatch and therefore it improves the oxygenation of the patient. So it decreases the work of breathing by splinting both the upper airway and by splinting the lower airway. It reduces the time to expiration and it prevents air trapping and therefore the volume exchange happens smoothly and it opens up the collapsed alveoli in the lung parenchyma when you give a peep.